Hello, and welcome to this introductory video on electrostatic equilibrium. In this video, we're just going to be going through what is electrostatic equilibrium, and in particular, what consequences this idea of electrostatic equilibrium has for what the electric field of a conductor must look like, both inside and out. So first off, we need to talk about what electrostatic equilibrium actually means. So remember from earlier discussions, we know that the word equilibrium just means that there is a balance of forces. Now, if you're also talking rotational, then of course it means there's also a balance of torques. What about static? Well, we know static too. Static means that there is no motion in this thing, as opposed to dynamic equilibrium, in which case we might have force balance, but motion. In this case, there is no motion whatsoever. Meaning, since we have the electro in front of there, that we're really talking about that there's no motion of any charges. So electrostatic equilibrium is a case where the forces on the charges are balanced such that there is no motion whatsoever of any of the charges. What we mean there is maybe we dump some charge onto something, we let that charge move around and settle, and it will find a configuration where it's not going to move around anymore. And we're going to see a little bit about how that goes in this discussion. But once it's found that, then the charges are not moving, the forces are balanced, so we've got electrostatic equilibrium. Okay, so let's think about some conductor in electrostatic equilibrium. The fact that there is no net force and no motion implies quite a lot for our charge distribution. So here, we'll draw a nice circular conductor. This is like maybe a solid disk. And suppose I wanted to throw down six electrons into that conductor. Now, they're definitely not going to go like this, because a conductor, right, means that the electrons are free to move if they want to. And these electrons are going to be repelling each other. So you can convince yourself, right, this guy wants to push that one away, and it could move, and that one could move, and that one could move. So they're definitely going to move in this configuration. What you can convince yourself of is that if you take the six of them and put them sort of equally around the edge of that sphere, then you will find that the forces will balance. Because, of course, they want to repel each other as far as possible. So they're trying to push each other out of that disk, but they're stuck in the disk. They cannot leave the conductor. At the same time, maybe this one is trying to push that one a little bit further around the conductor's edge that way. This one is trying to push it the other way, so it's going to be balanced. Okay, so the charges will move to the outer edge of our conductor. As a result of this, the field will end up being zero inside of the conductor. And you can, can quickly convince yourself that this has to be true, even without arguing about where the charges are, just by thinking that if there was a field in the conductor, then remember that there is a force due to that field, which is just my test charge. So if I plop down another electron in here, and there's actually a force or a field present, then the force on that electron is just the charge of the electron times the field, and it's got a force. And there's nothing to oppose it, then it would move. So that field had better be zero, otherwise I've not got electrostatic equilibrium, because we said the charges weren't moving. Okay. Now, what else must be true? It turns out that the field just outside the conductor has to be perpendicular to the surface of that conductor. So, why is that? Well, if the field were not perpendicular, so there's a well-behaved perpendicular one, if the field was maybe this way over here, then you could decompose that into a component that's actually along the direction, sort of, inside the conductor, which means this thing experiences a force and would move. And again, it wouldn't be electrostatic equilibrium. So the field inside is zero, and the field out here, E, is always, let's put this little thing here, perpendicular to the surface. So that is wrong, and it must be looking perpendicular everywhere. So that just means basically coming radially outward. So some food for thought about this. What would happen if we had two conductors with some charges, and they were in, in electrostatic equilibrium, and we brought them into contact with each other? 
So maybe this one had its six electrons, and then I brought another one over here, that maybe only had three excess electrons. Okay, what would happen then? How would electrostatic equilibrium make things change? And then what would things look like once there was a new equilibrium reached? And then, I've sort of drawn this roughly the same size, but what if I made one bigger than the other one? How would that change things?